Hello, my friends, and welcome back to another Rotator Danger 5 random random run, where we take a random character and random weapon and try to beat Danger 5 with it. Um, going for as long a win streak as possible, and I'm currently on quite a streak, so hopefully we can keep that one going. We have done 40 out of the 44 classes, and we'll be skipping two of the classes for the random weapons challenge. The Bull and Arms Dealer, of course, don't get to choose random weapons, so we will be skipping those for the random weapon challenges. Um, but of course, if you're interested in those characters, check out my class guides to those characters, and I will tell you how to get wins with them in those videos. But the remaining two characters that we have not yet covered in the random weapons challenge series are the Wildling and the Brawler, so working our way back up from the, the back of the list, the next one on the list is the Wildling. This, I think, is going to be somewhat dependent on what weapon we roll. There are good weapons and bad weapons for this character, because primitive weapons are very strong. Having lifesteal with primitive weapons is very powerful, of course, um, but the Wildling's limit to level 2 weapons is a severe penalty for some of the primitive weapons. For example, if we roll Slingshot, Slingshots really like to level up, so we will be... Uh, we will have a harder time if we roll certain weapons that really like to get leveled. Of course, Torch and Rock are just generally weapons that have very slow clear speeds, and so those could be difficult to use as well, but we'll have to see what we get. For this video, I'm going to immediately sell the stick that we get, because I used sticks for my class guide, so we won't be using those for, for this video, and uh, we will, even though we start with a stick, we'll immediately sell it just to try to get whatever weapon we roll as quickly as possible. Let's see what we get, and we'll jump in with the Wildling. All right, Fighting Stick is fun. This is a weapon that I think is hard to find a good use for because it's not best in slot for, like, any character except maybe um, Mutant. But the way that it plays out is still pretty strong because it gives you damage based on your experience, on your character level, and then 50% of your melee damage. So if we can level our character up a lot, then we can benefit from this significantly. You also get both primitive and medieval weapon tags, which I think are two of the best weapon tags, and they work together really well because medieval will give us dodge and armor and primitive will give us HP, which will all multiply together. And then we have lifesteal from the wildling, so that will be an additional multiplication on our defensive stats that we're getting here. On the other hand, they have very slow attack speed, so we'll have to see if we can actually get some clear speed going. I think that generally the alternating attack patterns on the weapons like this or sword where you have like it alternates between stabs and slashes i think that's generally an advantage because you can cover multiple sort of angles of approach from enemies so i'm i always like weapons like that i will take the baby gecko when you get it early like this it can just be a few extra materials it just means that you don't have to go out of your way to pick up materials and of course it's a unique item for something like fairy just a, a good item will combo well with non-weapon sources of damage as well, like uh, Baby Elephant and so on, and uh, Cute Monkey for healing, although this character has a lot of inbuilt healing, so we won't necessarily go for that. But Baby Elephant is particularly good for this character, since we're going to be somewhat limited on the damage output of our weapons, since we can't level them. So anything that combos well with non-weapon sources of damage is good. Do I want to roll for harvesting or just take luck? I think I'm going to roll for harvesting. I really like getting harvesting going early. As it happened, I just spent five materials and got luck anyways, but I think it was worth the, the effort here. I will lock the weird ghost. I think it's a very efficient item this early. Let's also make sure to sell our stick. Um, actually, I'm going to hold on to the... I, I will not buy the Weird Ghost. We're getting a lot of max HP just from the primitive weapon tag, so it's less valuable for this character, and I'd really like to roll into some economy items if we can. Take the Fighting Stick for sure, of course, and then roll again. And so here we can get Weird Food and Tree, which are really high-tier items, and I think both better to have locked than the Weird Ghost, so that worked out well. And then I'm going to roll, trying to find more fighting sticks, and we're able to lock another one. One of the downsides of primitive weapons is that it's a very large weapon pool, so you're less likely to find the specific weapon that you're looking for, because when you're more likely to roll a primitive weapon, it's still choosing from eight different weapons. So it's going to take more rolls for us to, to fill out our weapon set than it would otherwise. 
Fighting stick, not a very good weapon for lifesteal, I have to say, because of its very, very slow attack speed, so we're going to need to try to fix that. Um, I'll just take two armor here. When we get a level two upgrade like this, I think it's just worth grabbing. Take the fighting stick and roll, and we'll roll, and we'll roll, and buy another fighting stick. So four sticks, I think, is about what you sort of expect, at, given what we're doing with this build. So I'm not that upset about it. Obviously, we'd like to have another one locked or have found five or whatever, but, you know, we have to roll into these weapons and we're less likely to do that. I really need to prioritize attack speed because with a weapon like this that attacks super slowly, attack speed is one of the best things you can get. It takes one and a half seconds between attacks on the fighting stick, so a 10% attack speed reduction shaves off, um, like, 0.15 seconds, which is a really long, uh, a really large amount of gain for a small amount of attack speed upgrade. So here I'm going to take the attack speed over the melee damage. Our melee damage scales only at 50%, and attack speed is really valuable for this character. I'm going to reroll here, looking for... Uh, harvesting still, or I'll probably just take more attack speed. I would have preferred a higher level upgrade than that, but I think attack speed is just good enough on this character. We need to pick it up anytime we see it, pretty much. Then I'll buy these two, and we'll do a reroll. I'm looking for another fighting stick. Didn't find it. Um, do I want to lock an ugly tooth? I don't think this character cares that much about Ugly Tooth, so I might buy it if it shows up again, but I don't think I'm going to lock it. I'm going to reroll and look for better items for us, and in this case we found a Scar, giving which is both a really good economy item to get really early, but also, of course, our weapons scale with our character level, so we want to buy as much experience gain as we can find. Doing 13 base damage with our sticks, so... I do still want to buy melee damage when I see it. It's not like we're we're just going to completely ignore melee damage, but it's less effective on this character, and we do get some base damage from levels, so we won't prioritize it as heavily as we would on other characters, on other melee characters. I will say we've gotten a little bit lucky on... I'm not going to be able to break that tree in time. We've gotten a little bit lucky on crates. I'll take the Goat Skull here, just 1.5 damage for us, and then I don't think it's too late to start harvesting. I could also just buy Luck, but I think I will just grab some harvesting now and we can get a little bit of that, especially because it's more valuable since I'm buying Scar. I'm going to pass on the Terrified Onion. I would rather not reduce my luck this early, and this character actually won't need move speed as badly as some others just because we've got very high lifesteal, so we won't need to run away from enemies as much. Gambling token is a decent way to get our dodge going, but I think I'd rather focus on getting my damage going earlier. I'll definitely take Finn, though. The 10% speed and the 3% lifesteal is too good to pass up. And yeah, we lose 8 luck, but 10% speed is a lot. And then I'll take the injection here as well. One more reroll. We're still guaranteed to see one weapon in the shop, so I'm really hoping to find another fighting stick. We're getting kind of unlucky on those. We don't need to as aggressively roll for our weapon set, because we only need to find 12 weapons to max out our weapons, since they we can't go past level 2 on the Wildling. But I do want to find those 12 weapons. Hitting for 17 right now, which is definitely on the low end for melee weapons at this point. Um, but of course, as I continue to level, our base damage goes up. Here, we're getting speed, so I'm just going to buy dodge here. We can start building dodge relatively early. And then I'll just take a, a level of harvesting. Um, I'll buy the fin, and then now my move speed is higher, and um, it's... It is a little more expensive than if we'd bought it later, but it didn't cost us a, a locked shop slot. So I'll buy the Ugly Tooth now. And then I'm going to reroll. And I think I'll reroll again. I could buy this Claw Tree, but I don't think we are going to care that much about crit chance yet. 
um, and I'd rather try to reroll into something that's really good for us as well. This is our last shop where we're guaranteed to see a weapon in the shop, so I was really hoping to be able to lock a fighting stick, but once again, we have failed to do so. Break that tree. I want to repair my luck. Since I took Finn, it's definitely um, on the low end. And, you know, the lifesteal from Finn is... It's not zero value, but it is significantly worse than it would be on another character, since we already have 30% lifesteal. 33% lifesteal is not that much better than 30%. But I, I do think it was worth buying there just to make sure that we've got decent movement speed going. Let's break this tree before the end of the wave. Nice. Um, here I'll just take 6 melee damage. It It's only at 50% scaling, so we only get 3 base damage to our weapons, but that's still pretty good. And then I will definitely buy another Scar. Normally, you wouldn't necessarily want to get 2 Scars, because they, they don't stack well. Um, the more XP gain you have, the less value each point of it has. But, of course, we're fighting sticks, so every level we get is, is significantly more valuable. And then I'll take the Lost Duck here. I think now I will actually lock the gambling token as well, because I've got 10% dodge already. I think we can get to dodge cap quite quickly on this character. And yeah, I mean, I guess I'll buy a third scar. Um, that's fairly lucky. And then I think I will reroll again, still hoping to find a fighting stick, which we didn't, but I will lock a black belt. We're going to end up with plus 85% XP gain before wave 9 which should be a lot of levels for us, and that is definitely... That's one thing this build has going for us. I would say we're a little behind where I would expect to be currently. I, I don't think we have the damage to kill the, the slashers, so I'm just going to break the eggs. Um, I'd say we're a little behind where I would expect to be because we haven't found a sixth weapon, and we haven't leveled our weapons at all. Um... And I didn't find any harvesting early, so, you know, I rerolled a couple times without finding harvesting. So I, I think this build is going a little worse than than the average version of this build. Not so, so bad that I'm currently super worried, but definitely we're on the, on the weaker end of the expectation curve right now, I think. Pick up some percent damage here, and then I think I should just grab the attack speed. I do want to boost my dodge, but attack speed is such a, a boost for this character, so I think it's important to grab it. <laughs> we're, we're continuing to lose luck, but I do think that's worth doing. Um, given that I'm, I have reduced my luck so much, I probably won't buy Cyberball. No, I think I will still buy the Cyberball. This will be an investment in later, because I, I will, of course, try to build my luck back up. Uh, as we go, but uh, so it won't be much ver much value very now, uh, much value right now. Um, but it is going to just give me some non-weapon sources of damage later on, which is something that we definitely will want as this character starts to fall behind in damage thanks to our low, our enforced low weapon levels, which are even lower than you might expect them to be since we haven't found a single fighting stick in ten waves. Yes, I know it's not literally 10 waves. That was hyperbole before you get your comment going. Um, we are going to pick up as much material as we can. This is a, a rough wave for us because our, our damage is kind of low and there's just not that many enemies on the field. So my lifesteal is not keeping me alive as well as I'd like or keeping me healed as well as I'd like. Still reasonable, but it definitely could be stronger. And then here we're able to buy a Shady Potion, so our, our luck has recovered quite a bit. Um, I'm just going to take the armor. That combines well with all the defensive stats that we're getting on this character, so we'll just grab that now. And then I do want to buy some max HP. Our max HP is okay, but I definitely will need to increase it, so I think I do have to take this level 3 upgrade over increasing our luck. We're going into wave 9, so I'll grab the metal detector and the gentle alien and the tree, leave the cyberball locked, reroll once, finally we found a fighting stick, uh, and then we'll lock another tree.
All right, at least we got our sixth weapon. That gets us our all our synergy tags online. So we're getting 15 HP, 3 armor, and 6 dodge from these weapons, which is great. We also have 3 scars and a black belt going into wave 9. So we should get, like, 4 levels from this wave. Wave 9 is the farming wave for most characters. So you really want to have your, your farming items online. So grabbing a metal detector, grabbing XP items... Grabbing Gentle Alien and so on before Wave 9 will give you a lot of money. And then once you've passed Wave 9, those items tend to drop significantly in value. We also do have a Horde on this character, so we'll be able to gain some XP um, and materials from the Horde Wave, which is nice. Taking a little bit uh, too much damage here. Need to kill this loot alien. Break this tree as well. Left a lot of money on the ground there, much more than I'd have liked, but um, we did at least get three levels. I'll recycle the pencil. I'll buy the ritual because we do want more damage, and the lifesteal isn't, isn't, again, it's not zero value. It's not incredible value, but it's certainly worth picking up. Coupon, of course, will pay for itself eventually, and then I'm going to recycle this Blood Leech. I don't really care that much about losing Harvesting. The Harvesting has turned out not to be a huge component, but we just don't need the Lifesteal and Regeneration, so I'm going to just recycle this and get the money. And then here, I'll just take three armor. I could grab either of these offensive stats, but three armor will be really nice. And then now, I, th I might take ten luck over nine max HP here. No, I should probably just grab the HP. I think at this point we just want to build a bunch of defensive stats and try to survive the later waves. Since we ended up with such weak weapons, um, thanks to just not finding leveled versions of them, we probably won't have the money or the damage to clear the elites, but we should be able to just build enough defensive stats that we're unkillable. Here, though, I think I will just take 12% damage. Uh, I do, you know, three armor would, of course, be great, um, armor is always excellent, but 12% damage, I think, will help us clear things as quickly as possible. By the tree here, I think I will take up, take the, another baby gecko. I will, Cyberball obviously doesn't work with it, but Cyberball and Baby Elephant together work with baby gecko and, and with one another, so I think that will be a component of our build. Here, I will definitely take the metal... I think I will take the compass, because we do need some movement speed. And then I'm actually going to buy the incendiary turret. So incendiary turret here is not amazing, right? It's not that much damage. But it is going to help us with wave clear. Um, even with very low engineering, this can actually kill a lot of enemies. And so I think for an 80 material investment, we will get way more than 80 materials worth of enemies killed out of it. So you can often just buy a single or even a two incendiary turrets, even on non-engineering builds, especially if it's a build that struggles with wave clear, and get a lot of value out of it. So def definitely something to always keep in mind. Defective steroids is going to be great, even though it reduces our attack speed, and I will buy the gentle alien as well. I don't think I'm going to lock another compass. 15 move speed is fine. We'd like more, of course, but um, I think I'd rather try to get leveled up weapons or just more defensive stats. I should play on the opposite side of the arena from my incendiary turret. Try to pull enemies through it. So you can see there it's already killed like 10 things. Um, and is going to continue to do so. Just a little bit of extra money for us. Try to kill this loot alien. Normally you wouldn't want to buy those constructs on non-engineering builds, but the, the incendiary turret is an exception because it's just enough damage that it will contribute to your wave clear even without much engineering. Another loot alien. Can we get it before the end? Yeah. 
All right, well, four crates, <laughs> definitely happy with that. Grabbing recycling machine as the first of four crates is also pretty sweet because um, it means if we get items we don't want in the next three, we can recycle them. And we will definitely recycle this alien worm. We do want to keep our consumable healing as high as possible. Uh, scared sausage, we have minus one elemental damage. This does increase the damage of our incendiary turret by one. So that is kind of interesting for that purpose, but I think I'd rather not invest more in the turret, so we'll just take 34 materials. Um, on the other hand, I'll take this, we get an engineering, but more importantly, we get an armor. And then here, I'm just going to take the dodge, I'd like to get to dodge cap soon. Our crit chance is negative 9, so we won't bother with crit chance, let's just reroll. I'm going to roll this again, I think I'm looking for defensive stats or damage, and we'll take attack speed. Increased HP is great. Gentle Alien, yes. Duct Tape, yes. Let's reroll that. Finally found a fighting stick. So we have gotten up to level 2 weapons on two of our weapons. Notice that those gain damage from 85% of our XP. Fighting stick actually levels pretty well because the, the scaling on both the melee damage and the XP goes up a lot. So the fact that we're capped at level 2 is, is a downside, but um, at least going to level 2 we gain a lot of bonus damage. So you can see these do 42, these do 55. That's a huge boost. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I didn't catch that one in time. Just sneezed in the, into the microphone. Apologies to headphone users. Um, would I rather have stone skin for max HP or little muscly dude? I think this will help contribute to our wave clear, and I don't need the stone skin yet. So I'm going to lock the stone skin. I'm not that worried about dying in this next wave because we've got good healing. Maybe that will be mistaken, but I think that stone skin... Obviously, we want stone skin because we've got 12 armor, but um, I don't think we need it for the next wave. And then I will roll once, buy this defective steroids, and lock the adrenaline. And we've got two great unique defensive items coming up. Let's see if we can survive the first horde. If I can get all of my fighting sticks to level 2 before we fight an elite, then maybe we can kill the elite. Right now our damage is still on the low side. A loot alien down this direction, so I'm gonna go after that guy. You see, we we've slowed it down to a crawl. That's the great thing about Ugly Tooth. It it not only protects you from elites by slowing them, it also lets you focus loot aliens much easier. Also, the decent luck that we have combined with the consumable healing is helping to supplement our lifesteal a lot, which lets us play much more aggressively positioned in the middle of all these enemies. So that's one reason to go with that. I think it is too late in the run to want to take Weird Ghost here, so I'm going to recycle it. Um, you probably could if this was a regen build rather than a lifesteal build, because we're, go we're going into wave 12, which is a relatively safe wave for Weird Ghost, and we don't have an elite or anything. But for this build, which requires hitting enemies with lifesteal, I think it's just a little too risky. So I'm going to recycle it. I think I will take the book here. It can help with our incendiary turret, and also it's a unique item for fairy, and it only costs 15. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just grab that. And then Spicy Sauce, that's another non-weapon source of damage, which is something that we want quite badly, so we'll take that. Let's roll here, and I'll just take six melee damage. And then more attack speed. The more attack speed we get, the better, by far, of course. Stone Skin and Adrenaline are both great for us, and here... Even this late, because we're fighting stick, I would never do this on a non-fighting stick build, especially with all the XP game we already have. But because we're fighting stick, I'll buy the scar here. Injection is going to be good. Um, the harvesting, the fertilizer will pay for itself pretty quickly, so I'm going to grab that as well. Buy a Cyclops Worm to increase our damage. And then I am going to do one more reroll. Get to lock another fighting stick, that's great. We're still at minus 9 crit chance, so I still don't think that's going to be a component of our damage at all, even if I buy sunglasses, so I'm just going to skip those. 
Our defensive stats are excellent at this point. We have 88 maximum HP, which is a lot for wave 12. And we've got, uh, we're over 30% dodge. We've got 10 armor. So we're already at the sort of defensive benchmarks that we want to be at for the end game. Um, that means that we can either focus on just becoming totally invincible by buying more defensive stats, or we can pick up um, we can pick up more offensive stats as well without compromising our character's ability to survive the end game. I will say, with all these scars and the stone skin, we uh, we look quite fearsome here. Look look at this character. <laughs> Usually, you don't get to stop and just admire how the the horrible creation you've made, but um, in this case, we're pretty horrible looking. We have no elemental damage, so we're recycling the strange book. Um, and then I will continue to pick up dodge, just get to dodge cap as soon as I can. Luck is good for us for healing, for better items, of course. We also have a million XP gain, so the more luck we have, the better the quality of our levels is. But also, we have a cyberball, and we, will, we do intend to buy more stuff like that, if we can. Let's combine and pick up a fighting stick, and yeah, tractor is going to be good. We will benefit from that. Improved tools is interesting here. We do have this one incendiary turret, and it and attack speed is very good for this character. I think I am going to buy it, not really for the incendiary turret, but just because attack speed is so valuable, I'm willing to buy even this extremely inefficient attack speed. Um, 157 for 10% is not a good deal, but we just need it a lot. It, it's so good for us, and it pulls a unique out of the pool, so we can have better shops going forwards as well. I'll pick up a Lost Duck here, just more luck is good, and yeah, I'll take 15 regen. Regen isn't going to be a huge component, but fairy is just so good that I think you should pretty much always buy it, no matter what, um, as long as you have even like a few different level 1 items. Uh, 12 regen for 189 is just going to keep us alive much more easily, and if we get into a situation where we can't easily lifesteal because we've we're really low on health or whatever, then the fairy can help get us back to a position where we can go fight the elite. That's interesting. So, in the tooltip, um, our incendiary turret claims it burns for 7 damage, but in in game it's burning for 6 damage. I guess it's counting the one initial damage. Because it, it always does one initial damage plus the burn. I've never really looked at, at that discrepancy before, but it's interesting that that's how they chose to display that information. Um, coupon will still pay for itself, and lure, of course, is great. Speed, do I want more speed? Yeah, I think going up to 20% movement speed is going to be a big deal, especially because we're going into an elite wave. Um, I don't think this black belt is actually a good purchase, but I'm going to buy it anyways, just because it's really funny to me that we have... We now have 130% XP gain. We're, we're almost a, a mutant all by ourselves, just from having bought all the XP gain items. Then I'm going to reroll, get another fighting stick, but I think I'll buy the panda before the fighting stick. Lock this. Do I want the wings? Yeah, I can go up to 30% movement speed, especially because then I could find power generator or something. All right, let's check our damage against this elite. I think it is enough to try to kill it. This might be a difficult elite kill. Just gonna kind of... This one you just want to move just ahead of it and pause is, is the basic way to fight this elite. Just slowly work it around the arena, staying out of its slashes. And then it's going to start moving away. And then in the late stages of the fight, that's when you start taking damage from it ever, basically. Because it starts coming towards you instead of moving away from you. But again, just, just stay slowly ahead of it. Or it starts moving away from you. Um, and then moving randomly. But just just stay ahead of it by moving slowly and then stopping. 
that's a good fight for my hopefully still upcoming guide to elites. If somebody wants to please leave a comment um, just to mark that, I would appreciate it that there was a good elite fight in this um, in this video. Uh, I'm going to pick up the extra stomach. It's just going to be a lot of extra HP even this late. We only managed to kill one loot alien there. I probably should have saved the lure. No, we found it in a box, so I couldn't have. Um, but we, we unfortunately, we were only able to kill one of them because I spent so much time focusing down the elite. I'm going to take the turret here because it's worth one regen and we have some engineering. Is that right? Nah, I, I think I just want 27 materials more than that anyways. And then let me re-roll this, and I'm going to re-roll that. I guess I'll take luck. I was really hoping for higher tier stats there. Upgrade the fighting stick, buy some move speed. Um, I think I'm actually going to pass on the cake. We have 104 HP, and we're going to get more from the extra stomach. So I think I'm I'm not going to buy HP in the shop and just look for things that are better. Here I have to recycle this fighting stick to buy this one because we're capped at, at level 2 weapons. And then explosion size. I do have a spicy sauce and explosion size is good with spicy sauce. I think I actually will buy it because that will help... Um, just with our, our wave clear as our fighting sticks continue to fall off. These are going to get worse and worse as we go deeper and deeper into the waves because the, the game expects you to have better than level 2 weapons at this point. We don't have to, even though we have... Um, have extra stomach. We don't have to worry about like trying to pick up fruits while at full health or anything. We just have to worry about staying alive, which I'm actually not doing a great job of. The the HP we will get just as we uh, as we clear enemies. Yeah, I'm walking into a lot of attacks here because our our wave clear has started to really fall behind just because of the levels of our weapons and because fighting sticks not like an amazing weapon. I think we'll be totally fine because. We've got all this lifesteal, so our defensive stats are good. But I can no longer operate with the impunity I had earlier in the game. Leather Vest is going to be great. It only cost me 1 HP because we have the Stone Skin. So Stone Skin, one of the great things about Stone Skin is it works really well with Leather Vest, which is w already one of the best items in the game. Um, so I really like that synergy. I think I'm going to take the dodge over the melee damage. Just try to get to dodge cap as soon as we can. And then here... Wow, this is a tough one. I want all of these stats really badly. Um, when we hit level 25, you're guaranteed a level 4 upgrade. We hit level 25 at wave 15, which is very early for this. Um, so I, obviously we need the armor. Armor is a great defensive stat. We need the damage. I think our percent damage is so low that I'm going to take that. I could start trying to boost my crit chance by buying this Insanity and this Alloy. I think it only cost me 3% damage, so I might speculate on Insanity. Um, then if we find an efficient source of critical hit, we could start building some critical hit. And it also gives me a regen. So this was like a, a luxury purchase, and I wouldn't make it if we weren't already doing pretty well in terms of our build. But I think it is worth speculating on that because crit chance is one of the ways that we can actually increase our damage the most if we could start building any crit chance. Now we're finding fighting sticks now that we can't buy them. Um, sure, I'll take sad tomato. That gives us 20 regen. So now with 23 regen from that and the, and the lures, regen is also a good component of our healing. Um, let me buy the dangerous bunny and then I'll lock the tentacle, and I will not lock either of these, but I will reroll. <laughs> Here's all our fighting sticks. All the fighting sticks in the world. One downside of Sad Tomato on this build is we have so much max HP, so we have, a, have to heal up a lot, thanks to starting at half health on Sad Tomato. 
some of the things that we've tried to do haven't really come together on this build. Like, we never ended up with a lot of baby elephants or anything, so I tried to build to enable that, but it didn't work out. But that's okay. It's, it's totally okay on builds like this to have a couple plans and go with the one that worked, that, that you see in the shop, rather than focus in on a single plan. And in this case, the build, the, the plan that has worked because it's what we've seen in the shop, is just doing damage with our weapon attacks. Um, but we had a lot of other possibilities if that hadn't worked out. And staying flexible like that can be very good in, in this type of spot. Definitely take the potato. We lose two regen because of the fairy, but we gain two regen because of the potato. Um, and of course we gain all the other stats. Tractor will still pay for itself, because we get the 17, 18, and 19 harvesting. Um, and that's also a couple levels. I guess it is still worth taking even this late. I will take the armor here, because armor is excellent. Tentacle gets us to 0% crit chance, so now we technically can critical hit. Grab this propeller hat. I think I'm going to pass on the alien magic. I don't think we need those stats, and I'd like to keep my luck as high as possible. Um... Even this late, I will take the Lumberjack shirt, though, and then I'll roll again, roll again. Silver Bullet is great. This will make it much easier for us to kill bosses. And then our percent damage is quite low, but I don't know if it's low enough to spend 154 on 6% damage, so I think I'm just going to go to the next wave. Ow. <laughs> Any hit you take from a buffed ribcage hurts so bad, it just feels so bad to have that happen. I like that we're we're fast enough that we can make the tentacles do a dance, because they they always face towards you, so look at look at this guy. <laughs> if you have enough movement speed, you can swap their facing really quickly. You can tell this build has come together well because I'm doing stuff like that instead of focusing on my dodging. Still not making incredible money per wave, but I think it, it's still good. I'm just going to take the energy bracelet. Um, 88 is a lot to pay for 4% crit chance, but our other our attack stats are reasonably high elsewise, so increasing our critical hit chance is actually one of the ways we can increase our damage the most. I'm going to recycle the sharp bullet, of course, and then I'll just take 8% damage here. We will now buy the sunglasses. It cost me 1 HP and 1 armor, but like I said, crit chance is going to be a big component of our damage going forwards. And then I will buy the muscly dude, and the sunglasses, and the injection, and one more reroll. Cute monkey is another good way to heal, so I will pick that up. I'll pick this up. I don't think we're going to buy Peacock in wave 19. That is a way I could lose this game, so I'm going to avoid that. And then, do I want to lock gambling token for 4% dodge? I think I will pass on the gambling token. I can grab that 4% dodge from something else that doesn't cost me armor. This is one of the harder elites we could get, um, just a difficult one for melee characters in general because it chases you. But also it doesn't hold still, so you can't easily focus it down with melee weapons. I don't know if we're going to have the damage to kill it. It looks like we should, as long as I don't take too much damage on the way. I'm very happy that I invested in the silver bullet and in the crit chance, because that is what's enabling us to actually DPS this thing. There we go. Got it. Get to clear out all the brain bugs now, although I did summon 800 little goobers as a result of killing all those uh, summoners. Go break that tree. Luckily, our defensive stats are so high I don't have to worry too much, but... Um, <laughs> for a character that didn't have 135 health and all the defensive stats in the world, this could be a problem. Uh, Anvil is interesting. It's only going to give us two armor, but two armor is pretty nice. 
because we'll we'll get it in the wave 19 shop. Actually, I guess we get it in the wave 18 and wave 19 shop since we're getting it in a crate. So yeah, four armor is going to be good. I'm 90% sure the anvil still can't upgrade our weapons over level two, although I don't think I've ever had anvil on the wildling. So it would be interesting if it if it kind of bugs out, it gives us level three weapons. That would be a, a fun mechanic. Um, and then we'll recycle Pocket Factory. We just don't need it. Dangerous Bunny, I think, will pay for itself, even in only two shops. And then we'll buy the uh, Dodge here to go over Dodge Cap. That's why I didn't need to buy the Gambling Token. Just take three melee damage so we can kill stuff a little faster. All right, so we got two armor there. We did not get a level three weapon. Pick up the Alien Eyes, Bait, and Cute Monkey. Roll again and buy some luck. Roll again. Yeah, another cute monkey. We have all these baby geckos, so this is just another way for us to, to make sure that we're staying at full health all the time. And then I think I will buy the missile here. Our percent damage is good, but this is just one way to increase our damage overall. Then I'm going to roll, lock these two defensive items, and go to wave 19. Clear out the lampreys quickly so they can't put any pressure on us. I guess one downside of Sad Tomato is with extra stomach, it means we're getting a little bit less max HP. But I think somehow our max HP is going to be okay anyways. We also have 130% XP gain or whatever it is. Um, so we have a lot of free HP just from levels. We're actually going to hit level 30 and get another guaranteed level up. Or another guaranteed level 4 level up, which is kind of fun. Not often that your characters hit level 30. The great thing about Wildling is that you don't really have to spend on healing. So you can just spend on damage and defensive stats. Um, I will take the octopus. Yeah, we do lose all the crit chance we've carefully built up, or a bunch of the crit chance we've carefully built up, but this is still just a lot of stats. Um, here I'm going to recycle. We don't need more lifesteal. Let's take the scar. Obviously this won't come into play, but it is just kind of funny to go up to 150% XP gain. And similarly, the lure won't come into play, um, but gives us something to lifesteal off of in the in the last wave, which, so this is an interesting thing. Obviously this doesn't matter for this character because this character is kind of broken at this point, but having a lure going into the final wave can be useful on lifesteal builds because one of the struggles for lifesteal builds is that the there are not a lot of other enemies uh, alongside the bosses. Lure gives you a very high health but not dangerous target to focus with your lifesteal. So if you need to heal up, you can grab, you can go chase down the loot aliens and get lifesteal off of those. Um, so that that actually is a fairly useful, uh, th there is a good reason to take Lure in the final levels if you're a lifesteal build. Not always for every build or anything, but it is something to think about. I'm going to grab 20% attack speed here, just try to DPS the bosses down as quickly as we can. We'll take the defensive stats, a little more damage, roll, and roll, and roll. Just more armor, sure. Roll again. The hunting trophy would have been useful earlier. I'll take the snail. This could maybe make it a little easier for us to dodge. Then we'll just reroll to see if there's anything fun we could have gotten here. Looks like, nope, really, really did not find anything that interesting going into the fine in our final shop. But we have 24 armor, 60 dodge, 160 HP, and uh, tons of healing. So I'm feeling pretty good about this wave. Even aside from our actual ability to do damage. Alien eyes is, is great for the boss waves also, because you can stand right in them, hit them with multiple alien eyes, and it, it actually does a huge burst of damage. So if you're worried about your damage against elites and bosses, Alien Eyes is good for that, even though it's a fairly inefficient damage item. Um, but especially if you have a lot of defensive stats, if you stand like inside the boss, you guarantee hitting them with all six aliens, uh, all six eyes at once. And so that can really help you DPS them down. And we've got really high dodge, so we can stand directly inside the boss and hit them with six alien eyes at once. Just a, a powerful... Uh, 
way to add some burst damage and finish off the bosses. And there we go. Uh, thanks to the invincibility of our defensive setup, we were able to clear out the bosses pretty easily while getting um, decent damage. I would say this build came together quite well. It was a little... Uh, not touch and go, I, I never was too worried about it. Just Wildling's such a strong character, I wasn't worried about it. But it was definitely on the weaker end at first, because we weren't able to upgrade our weapons. But once those came online, everything else just fell into place very easily. Um, just looking at our other items, we got 47 healing from the two cute monkeys. So not great on those, they didn't do amazingly. We got 27 HP from the extra stomach. So again, not as high as you could have gotten from this, because I, I picked up the sad tomato and stuff like that, but still obviously a lot of health. Um, anything else really interesting? Lots of HP from stone skin, tons of healing from adrenaline, decent damage on the spicy sauce. So I actually am not unhappy with buying explosion size to support that. But the big story of this character was that we got 150% XP gain while using fighting sticks, so our weapon damage was incredible. Alright my friends, I hope that you've enjoyed this video, and of course as always if you have, feel free to leave a comment uh, and like the video. Both of those things help me out a ton with the algorithm and get new people watching these videos, which means more videos for everybody. Um, and of course if you if have enjoyed it, feel free to subscribe to my channel for more Brotato and other strategy game content. Cheers folks! I'll catch you next time.